Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation, which is also exponential. We have 4 to the power sine squared x times 2 to the power cosine squared x equals 2 times the square root of 2. And we are going to solve for x values. So to be able to solve this equation, first of all, take a look at both sides. We do see a 4, we do see a 2, forget about the variables, and then we have a 2 root 2. What do you think they have in common? Well, if you said they're all powers of 2 or they can be expressed as powers of 2, you got it. So 4, for example, can be written as 2 to the second power, right? Well, 2 is already 2 to the first power. What about 2 root 2? That's a little tricky, isn't it? Well, here's the thing. Square root of 2 can be thought of as 2 to the power 1 half. Why? Because if you take 2 to the power 1 half and square it, Superpower property tells you to multiply the exponents and you get 2 to the power 1, which is 2. So what number squared equals 2 and you want that number to be positive because it is the square root of a number in this case. So that would be root 2. Anyways, so that was kind of like a quick demonstration, not, that, not a proof necessarily, but hopefully that made sense. So here we kind of have two things. We have 2 to the first power and 2 to the power 1 half. That comes from the square root of 2. When you put those together, again, using properties of exponents, we get 2 to the power 1 plus 1 half, because we add the exponents, and that is 2 to the power 3 halves. Now, we have everything we need. Why not cook it, right? Let's go ahead and cook it up. So 4 will be replaced with 2 to the second power, and of course, we need to raise it to the power sine squared of x, right? Multiplied by... 2 to the power cosine squared, nothing is going to change there. On the right-hand side, 2 root 2 will be replaced with 2 to the power 3 halves, and now we're going to raise it to nothing because it's just by itself, so that's it, right? Okay, great. So where do we go from here? Once you get the 2s, now we can go ahead and put them together, but first apply the properties. Properties of exponents are very important. We're going to multiply these two things. That's going to give us 2 to the power 2 sine squared of x multiplied by 2 to the power cosine squared of x equals 2 to the power 3 halves. Let's not skip any steps so that everybody has a good understanding. Now we have the same base, so we can go ahead and add the exponents. 2 to the power 2 sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 2 to the power 3 halves. Now, we have the same base, so we kind of have something like this. a to the power x equals a to the power y, or a to the b, a to the c, whatever you call it. Maybe not use x because we're already using x here. Maybe use b and c. This implies b equals c, right? Well, there are some scenarios where b and c don't have to be equal for this to work. If, for example, a is 1, then any b and c will work. Or if a is 0, then any b and c will work, right? Or if a is negative 1, they both have to be odd or even, but they don't have to be the same. But what about 0 to the power 0? Well, I've been saying this all the time, and I know some people are still skeptical. I don't know why, but 0 to the power 0 is 1. That's another story. Check the description. I have made a video about that. Hopefully, you'll be convinced. If not, watch it again. So from here, we can basically get 2 to the power, or just forget about the 2s at the base, we can just write the exponents, set them equal to each other, and that gives us the following equation. Do you like that? <laughs> okay, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But where do we go from here, right? Well, here's the thing. This is a really easy equation, you know why? Because sine squared and cosine squared are closely related. You know how? The Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, it's not Pythagorean, it's Pythagorean, by the way. I don't know, it just annoys me when people say Pythagorean. I don't think that's proper, but anyways. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. How can I use that information? Well, there's a couple of ways to approach it. Either you want to go by sine squared or cosine squared, depending on what it is. You can replace one of them with the other. Or you can do something tricky, uh, which is kind of a little sneaky, which is something I like. You can add sine squared to both sides, right? And that'll give you what you want. This is 2 sine squared plus cosine squared, which is 3 halves. So this is equal to 3 halves. Isn't that cool? And this means sine squared x is equal to 3 halves minus 1, which is 2 halves. That's 1 half. Now, if you square root both sides, you're going to get two solutions, which gives us 
more solutions. So from here, for example, I can write sine x equal to square root of one half, which can be written as square root of one divided by square root of two, or like this, or even like this. I mean, depending on your, you know, favorite flavor, I like this one better. Some people like the other one, doesn't matter, no big deal, but basically that's what it is. But here's what you need to think about. The sine of which angle is root two over two? Let me tell you, it is 45 degrees or pi over four radians. Why? Because at that, if you think about the unit circle, sine equals cosine, then tangent is one, and you basically have this point on the unit circle, right? This is one, this is root two over two, comma, root two over two, the diagonal. And why is that happening? Because if you think about the circle intersecting the line y equals x, you're gonna get that, okay? Cool, so we have the angle pi over four, but that's just one of the angles. Of course, uh, there's another solution which comes from negative, and also there's still another solution for this one, which is gonna come be coming from the second quadrant because if you reflect this angle, in other words, you look at pi minus pi over four, they have the same sign, look at that, okay? First and second quadrant, those two angles will have the same sign, sign being S-I-N-E, okay? Not the S-I-G-N. So, which means there are two solutions, x is pi over four or three pi over four, which is pi minus pi over four, make sense? Okay, their sum is pi, in other words, they're supplementary angles. What about the other solution that comes from here, which is the negative one, right? Well, sine x can also be negative root two over two, and those are also gonna be the similar angles, but in different quadrants. For example, if you think about where sine is negative, here and here, right? What are they though? This is pi over four, but that's pi, my, pi plus pi over four, so that'll be five pi over four. And guess what this is equal to? Negative pi over four or two pi minus pi over four, which is seven pi over four. Therefore, we have four solutions to this equation. Now, what would happen if you went the cosine squared route? Nothing, it would still be the same thing. But the whole idea is just writing them in terms of a single variable and then going off of that. And this almost brings us to the end of this video, but let me tell you something. What would happen if this was a three and this was a two? Could we still solve it besides guessing or maybe some type of numerical method? Something to think about, right? Anyways, I'm going to leave it at that because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out A plus BI and... Bye-bye.